Candlepin Stars and Strikes, featuring the best Candlepin bowlers from all over New England. And now, in our 17th season, here's your hosts for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Dick Lutz and Mike Moore. Hello again, everybody. It's great to have you with us for another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Moore, and it's hard to believe we're already into our third ladder series of the year. And over the course of the next four weeks, five bowlers will be vying for our spot in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year to join two previous winners. They are Gary Carrington and Mike Morgan, a couple of Candlepin bowling icons, and another Candlepin bowling icon we haven't seen in years joins us today in the number five seat. We are looking forward to the matches over the next four weeks. Let's meet our bowlers in the first match of this ladder series, number three. First, our number five seed. He is from Londonderry, New Hampshire. You've seen him many times before, Tim Lipke. Good to have Tim back with an average of 126. High single of 214. High triple, one of the very few over 500 at 515. And his home bowling center is the bowling center that he and his wife own in Manchester, Lakeside Lanes. And Tim in his roll-off bowl to 672 to earn the number five seed. And he'll be taking on a young man who's making his television debut. He's from Merrimack, New Hampshire, Dave DiOrio. Yeah, he really took up Canopin bowling as a professional fairly recently. Only been bowling 11 years. David's average 123, high single bowling at just recently at 185, his high triple 455. And right here, Lita Lanes is where David calls home. And a 675 was his roll-off score. So let's get right to it. It's our first match. It's Tim Lifke and Dave DiOrio. We're coming back to Lita Lanes right after this. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire. All right, we're ready to go with our first match of the third ladder series of the year. There you see the five bowlers that uh, will be participating in this series. Our top seed, Gary Santora, and Tim Lipke and Dave DiOrio will be the first match this afternoon, and we're ready to go. Tim Lipke will be first to bowl here at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We're happy to have you with us for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. And we have some great bowlers ahead in the weeks ahead in this latter series. Names that are familiar to you all who have been watching Candlepin Bowling for many years. And a few perhaps that are not as well known, like David DiOrio, who does his first uh, bowling on television today. Tim Lipke starts us off. Tim has bowling in his blood. He is a proprietor of a bowling lane, Lakeside Lanes in Manchester. He and his wife, Wendy, have been operating Lakeside Lanes since uh, last September, September 1999. He's waiting for the wood to roll as he has the nine and the ten pins on the back row still standing. He'll take them one at a time. You can tell he's a very seasoned bowler. He's uh, very loose, cajoling with the crowd. Getting the butterflies out. And he'll start with a 10 box. Tim is 45 years old, and he has been bowling for 40 years. What you got to do, start them when they're young. Needless to say, his home lanes are lakeside lanes in Manchester. Folks may remember him from the Londonderry Bowling Center until it closed down a couple years ago. And when I moved here to New England in 1984. And Tim has a spare in the second box. Tim was the uh, first guy I saw when I turned on the television in August of 1984, wondering what this Candlepin bowling was all about. And there he was. And for some reason, that stayed with me. It was a divining moment in my life, apparently. Have you figured it out yet? <laughs> of course not. David DiOrio's first ball on television. Off the head pin, he leaves the one, the three, and the seven. Wood in front of the seven pin. He just picks the three pin. David's 43 years old, and as Mike mentioned in the open, he's only been bowling 11 years. He'll start out with a nine box in the opening frame. His home lanes right here at Lita Lanes, where he bowled his high single of his career, a 185 just this past week. A quarter Worcester takes one pin. 
the number two pin, the only pin to go. Everything else still standing. Almost made the spare. The five pin remains. Dave is a traffic manager for Hampshire Paper in Milford, and he's also a lane mechanic here at Lita Lanes part-time, so he knows this establishment. He starts out with 19 through 2. He knows where the skeletons are buried. Ah, he does. But if anything breaks down today, we will not ask him to repair the machines. We'll have somebody else go back and do that. Tim Lipke on the head pin and the spread eagle. Already we've had a couple of terms to use. The quarter Worcester, the spread eagle, the entire glossary of candlepin terms. The game is filled with colorful expressions that uh, have derivations and rich in history. The two and the three pins remain. That would be grandpa's teeth, wouldn't it? will be a nine box for Tim Lipke. Tim and his wife, Wendy, have been married for 19 years. They have a couple of kids, Shauna and Shane. Has an interesting hobby, antique cars. He's currently restoring a 1962 Chevy SS convertible, a super sport. Boy, that was a great car, wasn't it? You old enough to remember that? Oh, well, thank you for the compliment, and the answer is yes, I am. And Tim, what do you want from me? Not able to pick up the spare. Actually, my first car was a 62 Chevy. And back in the days when cars didn't get the kind of mileage that they do nowadays, it, at 39,000 miles, that car was, you know, getting ready for the scrap heap. Now you don't even break them in at 40,000 miles. What it, was your first It rusted time? out a little bit? Yeah, that, and I'm sure I abused it substantially as a college student. You remember your first car? Oh, you sure must. I do. Uh, my first one was a 1959 Morris Minor. A what? A Morris Minor, which is made in uh, England. A, a Morris Minor? A Morris Minor. Excuse me, did you grow up in Wellesley? Or? No. <laughs> Sounds fancy. Not at all. It's like a. Uh, it kind of looked like a, an old Volkswagen, actually. No kidding. Small, but it was. A, it was. A, the engine was in the front, but it had a, a little bit of resemblance to a Volkswagen. Diorio with a nine box. And that was followed up by a Simca. I remember that vaguely. Swedish car. Wow. They were both very old when I got them. Here's Diorio right in the pocket. Six and the seven still standing. Wood way out in front of the six pin. Don't know if it'll help or hurt. Well, didn't help. And that'll be a nine box for Dave DiOrio as he looks for his first mark of the match. Lipke with a six pin lead after four boxes. Of course, three spares in a row, three marks in a row, $50 bonus money. And in the triple strike jackpot this week, $700 for our first bowler to get three strikes in a row. <laughs> Happened twice last season, happens on the average once or twice every year. And the money accumulates at the rate of another $25 a week until the jackpot is hit, and then it goes back to $500 again. That'll be, ooh, I was gonna put it in the spare column for Tim and he did not make it. The 10 pin still stands. <laughs> 10 box for Tim Lipke, a 53 half. Waiting in the wings, our number three seed, Rich Hallberg, will take on the winner of this match. Bowlers very close together this time, Dick. Only 14 pins separating the top seed from the fifth seed, and 672 as a cutoff point is extremely high. Possibly, I think it is the highest ever that we've had for last place to get into the finals. Half Worcester on the left side for Tim Lipke. The two in the eight pins were the only ones to go. Will he pick up the spare? He gave it a shot. That's the way to do it. Hit extremely thin on the head pin either side, and uh, hope to get some sidewall action. Not quite enough to topple the four that time. But he will be open again. Just one mark. In 
this string so far for either bowler. It belongs to Lipke. Well, you know, Dick, he is uh, truly one of the icons, as I mentioned at the beginning of our show today. He has eight Pro Tour titles. And there's only three Candlepin bowlers ahead of him in history. Craig Holbrook, Peter Flynn, and Tom Olsen. Diorio off the head pin, but he leaves himself a spear opportunity with the one, the three, and the six. And he'll throw it past the head pin. Well, Tim Lipke's waiting for him, so very much a wide open match early on. That'll be a seven box for David Diorio. You, you don't want to give Tim Lipke too much time to get started because once he goes, he's off to the races. Very explosive bowler. Haven't seen him on TV, as I think you mentioned, Dick, for quite a long time. First appearance in years. Uh, Diorio leaves the four horsemen on the left side. The one, the two, the four, and the seven. And he'll pick the one. The head pin is cleanly taken from the pick. Right off the fence. An eight box. So just 15 in those two boxes for David Diorio. Looking for his first mark. Lipke with a 63 and 11 pin lead for Lipke through six boxes. Right through the head pin, and down goes the seven. Now, oh, look at they're all still falling. Tim Lipke never looked back. He had no idea that they had fallen down, the three on the left, until he turned back. Now he has a makeable shot with Wood out in front. Yeah. Of the three pin, the three, the six, and the ten. Not great, Wood, but it should be enough. That was pretty good wood. Any wood that works is good wood, especially after getting a break from having the half the uh, spread eagle broken up the way he did. Candleman Stars and Strikes presented by the Thompson family of dealerships, McMulkin Chevrolet, Nashua Hyundai, Nashua Mitsubishi, and Nashua Daewoo, all located in the New England Auto Village on the Daniel Webster Highway in Nashua and Lipke follows up the spare with a strike. Take a look at it one more time. Our first strike of the match belongs to Tim Lipke. Now Diorio way off the head pin on that shot. Kind of reared up at the line and uh, never really followed through to get the ball back to the head pin. Takes out the six and the nine. the head pin so four horsemen on the left remain with the 10 pin in the right corner and that'll be a nine box for David Diorio now in completed frames finds himself 22 pins behind Tim Lipke and he'll be facing a Lipke strike here in the eighth frame reading a couple of your letters during the second string of this afternoon's match. We'd love to hear from you from wherever you may be watching Candleton Stars and Strikes. And you know, folks, the email us here at Lita Lane's, Dick. We'd be happy to, uh, to get their mail that way. The uh, web address for Lita Lane's is litalanes.org, O-R-G, www.litalanes.org. So send us an email. A lot of folks are online these days. We'd be happy to respond that way as well. That'll be an eight box for David Diorio. He's at 69 through eight. Now Tim Lipke looks for some bonus money. Working on two marks in a row. He's got a strike on the board right now. Right on the head pin to full. Of course, now last time the two pins on the right went down. Not this time. One more to fill the strike. He'll put eight in the strike. No bonus money this time around for Tim Lipke. And he'll take a 10 box. Well, he'll need a mark to at least hit his average of 126. An average he carries at his own bowling center, Lakeside Lanes in Manchester. Right on the head pin. 
The five goes down. The ten pin still stands, but that five wood is now nestled right in front of it in a prone position. Pretty good wood set up here for Tim Lipke all over the deck. He'll wait and let it settle down. Uh, rolled out a little farther than I thought. Should still be helpful, though. He'll finish with a spare. He's at 121 plus a ball. So he'll be right around his average of 126. Depending on what he gets with this last ball. And David Diorio is in danger of falling way behind. He needs a couple of marks here to finish out the first string. Lipke finishes with an eight in the spare and a 129 first string. David Diorio looks for his first mark. Tim Lipke with a 76 second half. He had 53 through five, and then he's roaring back with a 129 final. Well, Lipke not shying away at the end, that's for sure, pouring it on. As we thought that he might. Diorio looks for the spare. Oh. He'll not get it, though. The crowd would like to see him climb back into this match up against the 10 box in the ninth frame. He's at 78. He'll need a mark to reach 90. First television appearance in this uh, young man's life. We say young in terms of uh, bowling experience only at the game, not even a dozen years. The two, the four, and the seven still standing on the left side of the lane for David Diorio looking for his first mark. Will he get it right there? He'll not. Uh, He'll pick the two pin right off. Well, he chose to go directly at the object pin instead of using the deadwood to sweep over. It will be an 87 first string for David Diorio and a 42 pin lead in the match for Tim Lipke. As we head to the middle string of our three string match, our opening match of this third ladder series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS TV. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Dexter Shoe, the number one bowling shoes in the world. Dave DiOrio will be first to bowl in our second string with Tim Lipke taking a 42 pin lead into the second string of this match. And Diorio still having a difficult time finding the range. Looking for his first mark. Won't get it there. Still standing is the three. The nine and the ten. Wood in between. And that'll be a nine oh. box. He can't even buy a break on going after ten. Got a nice note from Clarice and Bill Lacey from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. He is 87. She is 92. And they bowl every week at Owen Martin's Bowlerama in Sanford, Maine. They bowl five strings. Oh my. And it looks like Claris last week had two strings of 94 and 95. How about that? It's embarrassing for us after our little match last year. And she writes that they enjoyed many years of Channel 5 Saturday Candlepin Bowling with Don Gillison. She wishes us many more years of all this fun. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Bill Lacey from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Lovely to hear from you. It's so great to hear that, that people that age or any age still like to bowl together and do, do something as a family. That's terrific. 94 and 95, huh? Well, we were 98 and 94. At half their age, I might point out. <laughs> Here's Tim Lipke starting out the second string. It's the two, the four, and the seven. Tim had 129 his opening string. Three pins above his current league average. And he spares to start off the second string. Yeah, he's really been locked in since the uh, seventh frame of last game. He's hasn't left any pins standing since then. And he racked up a 73 second half. Yeah, if you go back to the fourth frame, he pinned the rest of the way out. 
So you didn't leave yeah. a pin on the deck. Puts a seven in the spare. Actually, he only left one pin standing today, That's right? In the, the third, third, in the third frame. frame, he had a nine yeah. bucks. Yeah. However, he's going to yeah. have a tough time cleaning them up here. A nine box for Tim Lipke. He adds to his lead. Spotted a racetrack celebrity in the crowd today. The uh, track announcer at Rockingham Park, John Vitale, is here enjoying the bowling action. His father's a, just a very accomplished and very amusing uh, hypnotist, Jerry Valley. Don't know if you've ever seen Jerry. I've seen the name. Oh, the guy's great. If you ever have a chance to see one of his shows, terrific entertainer. I believe and, uh, I've heard him on the radio. Uh, almost positive. So John was, somebody had him on. I'm almost positive it was... Uh, was Jerry talking about getting hitters out of slumps. Ten box. Ah, big. Dave DiOrio. All right, well, he's getting closer to getting that first mark. Could happen any time now. Back to back tens for David DiOrio. David and his wife Judy have been married for 12 years, and their children, including stepchildren, include Christine, Heather, Christy, Michelle, Stephanie, and a grandson, Joshua, who's 18 months old. You got to mention the ages of all these these girls, and they're, they're I don't know if they all live with them or if they're all in the house still. But 21, 21, 19, 19, and 17. All women, <laughs> all girls. Another 10 box for David. A genuinely nice guy who enjoys life as a. Uh, an outdoorsman, that's what he enjoys the most, David DiOrio does. Hunting, fishing, camping, all listed as his hobbies. Lippy on the head pin. Not much to show for it. The five, the six, and the ten. The wood in front of the six and the ten may come into play. Well, he tried it, but didn't get much. Ever since we mentioned he hadn't left a pin standing, he's been leaving pin standing. <laughs> Only one mark between our two bowlers this string, and we're about to take a break, so perhaps Tim can get into the commercials with a big mark here. Well, they surround the seven pin, but the seven pin still stands. Wood in front of it. Very makeable shot. Just want to keep it away from the left side so you don't put it in the ditch. Second mark of the string for Tim Lipke, and we'll go to the break. Lipke will be working on a spare when we come back. Dave DiOrio still looks for his first mark. Lipke in the lead, and we'll take a break. We're coming back to Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire, on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. After the break on lane 34, at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, Dick Lutzk with Mike Morin. Happy to have you with us for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Got a note here from Kenneth DeVoe, Michael, from North Andover, Massachusetts. He asks a couple of questions. Whatever happened to Paul Berger? Why don't we see Paul Berger? Any? There's a spare for DiOrio. And he picked up a nice one and gets a roar from the crowd. Boy, watch it again. Four horsemen on the right, the eight pin in the back, and a spare for, Bur for DiOrio. Now we'll try to fill it. He was right on the head pin, and he puts six in it, but leaves a split. Uh, asking about uh, Paul Berger, yes. who was uh, one of the few bowlers ever to shoot 500 on television, as you may recall, we talked about that in the old Channel 5 show. Well, one pin at a time. Uh, I uh, don't see him as being an active member, at least in the past year in the WCBC, and obviously he's not qualified or tried out to be on our show. So uh, that's the only thing I can tell you. Does not appear to be active, at least not in the Pro Tour. And Kenneth DeVoe also asks about Doug Brown and Dan Murphy, the previous hosts of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS. 
TV. Doug Brown is with ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut, and doing quite well. And Dan Murphy is the operator of Boutwell's Bowling Center in Concord, New Hampshire. And both, as I understand it, doing very well. So if you see either of those gentlemen, please give them our regards. Did a great job on the show for uh, 10, 11. Long time, 12 long, years, maybe. Yeah, 12 years. Dan, a very accomplished a candlepin bowler himself. And Doug isn't too bad either, not a professional, but I think they had a match on television uh, several years ago, and I think it was fairly close, which is surprising. They did have a match? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. I like Doug a lot, a real gentleman. Doug was the very first sports reporter on WNDS-TV when WNDS signed oh. on the air back in the 80s when they had a full when they first the first time they had a full news mm. operation Doug was their sports anchor went on to do Boston University football and basketball and hockey games for many years he's done about every sport uh, he's kind of the Sean McDonough of his era I haven't seen him on ESPN but I do hear him on ESPN doing radio, radio occasionally yes. he's doing radio Look at this very close match. Only one pin separating our two bowlers this game. But of course, overall in the match, Tim Lipke still has a sizable lead. Now 43 pins, the advantage. Diorio will try to chip away at it. That's, ooh, he almost got it. Nice shot. Six pin remains. Best he can do is a 10 box here in the seventh frame in game number two. And that's what it'll be. Our runner one up mark. Go ahead. Uh, see our runner up today uh, gets $150. 50 of which has been added by Lita Lanes, beefing up our prize money this season, thanks to Ray Simino and his staff for doing that, adding extra bonus money as well for uh, numbers of marks in a row consecutively. Nice shot by David DiOrio. His second mark of the second string. We'll watch it one more time, and you have to feel with a couple of marks under his belt. The butterflies may finally be disappearing. Yeah, and he's hitting the head pin with more authority right now. He's had a few splits, of course, which makes it tough. But he's getting closer to the target. And Tim Lipke, who is no stranger to the television lights, responds. 30 or so appearances between the Boston and our show. Third mark of the second string for Lipke. I'll tell you something, he had a nice run back in the 80s. Uh, Tim Lipke was bowler of the year, WCBC in 85-86, and into the 90s in 1990, 1991, and 1995. So he is a four-time Pro Bowler of the Year, and only one man, from, uh, from what I could find out, has ever exceeded that, and that would be, of course, Tommy Olsta, who was a five-time Pro Bowler of the Year. And that is accomplished by numbers of pins over your six tournaments at the WCBC every year. And Lipke, as soon as it left his hand, he knew that he had not converted the spare. That'll be a 10 box for Tim. He's at 95 through 8. Diorio working on a spare. Now he caught the head pin oh. a little thin. He's going to get some good action after the fact. Deserved uh, better than that, didn't he? The question is if that wood is frozen to the 5 pin. He might make this a doable shot. It was not. So he'll go for the six and the ten and go for a nine box. Settle for eight. He's at 100 even. Three, five, and the six on the right-hand side. David DiOrio bowling from left to right. 
bit unorthodox for Candlepin bowlers. And it's uh, causing him to at times steer the ball to the right hand side. As was the case right there. So the three and the five remain. 109 second string for David Diorio. Two string total of 196. Tim Lipke on the head pin and right through. That was sour. If they have a term for that, I don't know what it is. I'd like to know what Tim is calling it under his breath right He's now. He's calling it something, <laughs> that's for sure. Just plain ugly. Maybe that's the term. <laughs> He'll end up with a six box. He's at 101. Next time you're in Nashua near Lita Lanes, why not head on over to the Pizza Hut on Amherst Street, right at 313 Amherst Street. They have a terrific luncheon buffet Monday through Friday from 1130 to 1. All you can eat. They have a wonderful salad bar. It comes with breadsticks and all of the condiments as well. Laurie Christian and the staff at Pizza Hut do a terrific job. It's just down the street from Lita Lanes, right near the Everett Turnpike. Check out the Pizza Hut, 313 Amherst Street in Nashua, 889-7710 if you want a place in order to go. But try out the luncheon buffet Monday through Friday from 1130 to 1 at Pizza Hut on Amherst Street in Nashua. Our official scorekeeper today is Paul Willett, who's been our scorekeeper all season long. Now that Chris Bovera is uh, working a different job and is uh, pretty much a full-time active uh, bowler now. In fact, the, our Tournament of Champions winner last, last year. Last year. Making everybody here at Lita Lane's very proud. It'll be a nine box for nope. Tim Lipke. It'll, ten. It'll be a ten box for Tim Lipke. And a 111 second string, and he wins the string by two, adds a couple to his lead. He leads by 44 as we head to the third and final string of the first match of our third ladder series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We continue on WNDS-TV. Ready to go with our third string. Tim Lipke leading David Diorio 240 to 196. That's a 44 pin advantage for Tim Lipke, the Londonderry, New Hampshire resident who bowls out of Lakeside Lanes in Manchester. And he starts off the third string with a strike. I don't think Tim, I don't think Tim's been real active in the, uh, the tour the last couple of years. Obviously very busy getting the business up and running. But uh, you know he's got to take some time to do a little practicing in his home center as the four and the eight of the last two to go down. I think he has trouble getting a lane. <laughs> Well, he's like Joe Tavernish, you know, the guy never gets to do anything else. It's an all-encompassing business to make it successful. Tim, the proprietor of Lakeside Lanes in Manchester, if you're just joining us. This is a makeable shot. Needed a break, didn't get it. Put nine in the strike. We haven't given away any bonus money this afternoon. Ten box for Tim Lipke. Well, it's time for David DiOrio to change all that, string a few marks together, and tighten this matchup. I want to acknowledge a nice note we got from Eleanor Long of Worcester, Massachusetts. Thank you, Eleanor, for taking the time to write. DiOrio with a head pin shot. The nine pin is the only pin standing. Well, it was a great hit too, and how the nine pin is still standing? Anybody's guess. It's still standing. Not able to make the spare. This would have been the day to beat Tim Lipke, too, because uh, Tim is bowling under his average. At the top of the uh, ladder for this series is Gary Santora, no stranger to our show the last couple of years, been in the Tournament of Champions, 686, so he will be here in three weeks to take on whoever eventually succeeds and gets all the way up to the second position. There's another good pocket shot by David DiOrio right there, and he was left with a spare opportunity. Not able to convert again. Let's say hello to Lionel and Teresa Pellerin of Manchester. They are 
devoted followers of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS. Another nine box from Dave Diorio. Lionel and Teresa Pellerin watch the show every week. Their daughter Diane is the friendly voice you hear when you call Pediatric Health Associates in Manchester. Oh, no kidding. And that's where my wife works. I wondered how you knew these people. And your wife uh, does what? She's a uh, patient service representative at the uh, pediatrician's office. Uh -huh. She bring home lots of colds and things that the kids bring into the office. Lip you will be open in the third frame. Ten box for Tim. I know that Mr. and Mrs. Pellerin at one point, they're such devotees of the show, they were actually planning a vacation week around our taping to, to come, come on. to one of the tapings. It just, it just hasn't worked out. But hopefully we'll get to see him down the road. Well, let us know when your vacation is, and we'll rearrange our taping schedule to accommodate for Pellerin's. Tim Lipke with the spare in the fourth frame. He knows he got away with one. You can see that impish smile as he walks back. He also knows he's well in control yeah. of this match. Not bowling great, but good enough to win. Diorio on the head pin, a little thin, and pins all over the deck on this one. I watch, Four, the five, the yeah. seven, the eight, and the ten. As I watch him struggle today, I can relate. And I think a lot of people can. Look, Look at, at this. <laughs> that was almost impossible. Folks, can you relate to this, how much of a struggle this game could be? They're still standing. And he'll take an eight box. Recently bowling 185, his uh, new recent high just, just a few weeks ago. That'll be off the head pin. Maybe, Maybe that's what he should have been doing all day. Good action off the side walls. Leaves a spare opportunity. The one, the two, and the five. And that'll be a nine box. For Diorio, it's a 58-pin lead plus a ball for Tim Lipke as we go to the break. We're coming back, heading down the home stretch. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS-TV. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Dexter Shoe, the number one bowling shoes in the world. Tim Lipke moves to lane 34 at Lita Lanes. Comfortably ahead by 58 pins plus whatever he gets on this ball. That makes it a 65 pin lead for Tim Lipke with six boxes to go. Be a good opportunity for me to tell you how the uh, recent WCBC Pro Tour has done. This is back in early November at the Bolarama in uh, Sanford, Maine. Our uh, winner was Mark Gregory with a 14-11. Dave Richards, 13-50. Steve Reno, who you saw a couple of weeks ago, and third Mike Kusha in fourth, and Mike Poulin, who you saw two weeks ago, was in fifth. And a strike for Tim Lipke in the. Sixth frame. Watch it one more time. A little bit of a backdoor action here. Watch that five pin come from behind. Third mark of the string for Lipke. Diorio looks for his first mark of the third string. He was without a mark in the first string. He had two spares in the second string, and he's looking for his first mark of the third string.
be a nine box for David Diorio. He's at 44 for the half. Talking about the Pro Tour, the other uh, bowlers making the top 10, Kevin Davis, Gary Carrington, who's in the Tournament of Champions next spring, Charlie Jutras, who we saw a few weeks ago, Bruno DeFeo and Steve Vadney. So of the 10 bowlers, nine have appeared on our show in the last year, year and a half or so. The only exception is Mike Kusha. Mark Gregory's win, by the way, is his fifth in his career. Congratulations to Mark. As Diorio looks at a spare opportunity here, he's going to play the wood, and he'll make the spare. Nice shot for David Diorio. First spare of the third string and a big smile on his face as he comes back. We'll watch it one more time. He played the wood and played it well. Certainly want to acknowledge the women in the Pro Tour in uh, November as well. The winner was Karen Valcourt. The 1245, Glenn Hickey, Deb Regan, who's been on our mixed double show, which, by the way, starts in again in a couple of weeks. Karen McCormick, who's been on with us. Uh, Janie Brown and Janet Pock. So there's your top six. And the women, congratulations to them as well. Lipke unable to put a couple of marks together. He'll put eight in his strikes. Want to acknowledge our terrific crew working here at Lita Lanes to bring all of the excitement of Candlepin Stars and Strikes to you on WNDS TV. Our director is Ken Knight. And working in the truck with Ken is Dave McCarthy and Paul Hunter and Larry Taylor and Working the cameras here, Kevin LaFond and Bob Gold working double duty here today, this afternoon. Did I miss anybody in the truck, fellas? They'll let me know if I did. Well, there's the four horsemen on the right side along with the eight pin in the back. Not able to convert. Box for Tim Lipke as he continues to pin well. He's only left one pin on the deck in this string. Didn't leave too many in the first two. Now Diorio works on a spare. I'd like to see him put a few together and at least get some bonus money. Not that way. <laughs> That's ugly. Uh, that one's but ugly. The one and the nine. Everything else is on the deck. And a two-pin fill on his sixth frame spare. Oh, oh look at that. He almost my. made it. Seven pin all by itself. And a 10 box for a 66. He's going to need to scramble to make 300. Yeah, he need a 104 game. Which means he needs a mark and a good fill. And not like that. Half Worcester on the right side. A three and the nine. He'll surprise us and finish with a triple strike. <laughs> Walk out of here with $700 and still lose. Box for Dave Diorio. He is at 75 through eight. Tim Lipke really tries to put the exclamation point on this one. Ends up with a semicolon, however. <laughs> Well, he has won the match. I believe it's impossible oh, yeah. for Diorio oh, mathematically to come back. Lipke will not convert the spare. Five pins surrounded by two pieces of wood. Another 10 box for Tim. He's at 113. Six, seven. Some wood against the seven pin, kind of leaning into the gutter. Could be of some help. Not going to make it. He's at 122. Whoa. 
waiting for the wood to clear. And a 123 for Tim Lipke and a three string total of 363 and he will advance to take on Rich Halberg next week and we'll come back to meet our bowlers and if uh, David DiOrio does something spectacular we'll show it to you when, you, when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. There you see the final totals of our match this afternoon. Third string, 123 for Lipke, 98 for DiOrio. Three string totals, 363 for Tim Lipke and 294 for David DiOrio. And Lipke got the lead and like an old yeah. pro that he is, he hung right onto it. I think Tim would be the first to admit that he could have been had today, but uh, he did bowl badly. Over average one game, but he had enough, 363, actually by quite a wide margin. He'll uh, probably need to bring some better bowling, though, as we get along to the uh, top of the ladder. All right, let's meet our bowlers this afternoon. First, our runner-up, David DiOrio. David? You know, the question that everybody's going to ask you now that they see you, what was it like to be on TV for the first time? Was it what you thought it was going to be, or was there any surprise? Nervous. 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 Took a little, takes a little getting used to, no question about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be back, though. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you. We have $150 for you. Congratulations to you, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. David DiOrio, our runner-up here this afternoon. And now Tim Lipke will roll the ball, and we'll try to match him up with a winner at home in our bonus ball contest. $40 in the jackpot. If we can match up a winner, uh, a postcard here in our bin to the number of pins that Tim, Tim Lipke knocks down with this one ball. And it looks like it'll be a six, Michael. See if there's a right. six in there to grab out of the bin. Dig way Michael down here. Michael rummaging through, and uh, we've got a bin full of cards here. And let's check to make sure all the information is there. And it appears to be, it looks like it's Kim Vargas from Lynn, Massachusetts, who picked eight. It's not a match. We have a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchester, Massachusetts. And we will bring on Tim Lipke. And uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, uh, 363, good enough to win this afternoon, but not your best. Far from it. Uh, I can really sympathize with Dave being the first time. I remember back many years ago, and I think everybody that's been on TV before for their first time really can understand the nerves and the lights and everything else. It really plays a key factor, but Dave's too good a bowler not to be back. We we'll look forward to seeing him back again, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. You climb the ladder. It's Rich Hallberg next week. I know Rich very well. We're good friends, too. So, in fact, I know everybody on the ladder, so we'll have to see what happens. All right, Tim, congratulations to you. We'll see you next week. Thank you. See you, Tim. Thanks, Tim sure. Lipke, our winner this afternoon, and up the ladder we go. Yeah, we saw Rich Halberg back in January in the mixed doubles. It'll be his first appearance this season on the singles. We look forward to seeing you as well at Lita Lanes in Nashua for our second round match next week. For Mike Morin and our entire WNDS TV 50 crew, I'm Dick Lutz. Thanks for watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and we'll see you next time on WNDS. So long, everybody.